Hey everybody, what's going on? Before I start this video, I just want to go over a few things really quickly. Um, a portion of this part of this review that I'm doing is um, going to be uh, about the tutorial still, so it's going to be the tutorial continued just for a little bit because uh, in the first part uh, there was there was a few things that I missed and some things I want to clarify so um, that I didn't do in the last video that I think I should like really touch up on some more just just for clarity's sake and um, also I want to apologize for any wrong information about the um, the crystals and the fragments because I'm not I'm not quite sure when all that stuff was released because I'm, I'm I'm not sure if that was released all together or if it was like in one update and then the da the downfall update came later with some more stuff so it's been a long ass time and I wasn't in the mood to just search it up because when I was putting the video together it got really late and I was really tired so forgive me for that so yeah now let's just get into the video Alright, so the, one of the first things I want to um, clarify and expand upon is the, the stances again. The way the game teaches you about stances, right? Recall in the first part that I said that um, like at the start of the game in that beginning area, like that, that when you get to the stances, when you start the stance switching little tutorial thing uh, at, the st at that one statue, I said that that was the only real tutorial in that area and what I meant by that because I know I know that the game tells you about the attacking um, and the lock on and the dodging and the, and the blocking and the and the style ability and all that I know that but what I was really getting at was that the game makes you do that little trial where you you spin around uh, your character by switching stances. That was what I was really getting at because as far as those other things go, like the attacking, the lock on, and the dodging, all that's fine. Like you don't really need to make the player do like a little do this thing X amount of time kind of trial because those things are immediately obvious. Like you press the button that if we're attacking, you can immediately see what it does. You do the same thing for lock-on, you can see what it does. Same thing for dodging. Um, for stances though, like, I think that was... I think that was good that they did it for stances though, because stances... It's not immediately obvious what those things are used for. The stances. You, they, they, they do tell you about it, but they don't make you do anything with them. Right? Like as far as uh, seeing, um, seeing uh, what attacks come from what stance and whatever and whatnot, that needed to be expanded upon a little bit more. They do tell you about alternate attacks, but oh, let me get to that. I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Um, but before I do that, um, I think I think the way they handled stances should have been the way they handled um, guarding and fainting and. Um, your style ability because um, a lot of times um, uh, new players uh, yeah, keep asking about the fainting especially about the fainting in the well they don't really do the they don't really they get told about it and they don't really use those things even though they're supposed to especially especially blocking and and their style ability like you'd be surprised right you, you can get through the whole tutorial without really using those in it and then it's like as I said like it's like I said uh, in the first part it just it's because it just doesn't stick the game doesn't force you to practice those things so if it was more I think if uh, the fainting the guarding and um, 
the style ability were handled the way the stance switching was. You know, like have them guard X amount of attacks or faint this many times or or successfully use their style ability against uh, this many attacks, you know. I think uh, new players would have had a better time grasping these things. Have, have actually actually try to use them because, like, not to say that they don't use them at all, but a lot of times when I run into a new player online, it's, like they it, they act like the guard button doesn't exist, right? Now they'll, they'll seldom block, they'll seldom use their style ability because the game doesn't really make them, right? Um, they won't faint either. But like fainting's kind of an advanced concept, so I don't really fault them for that. But still, the game could do better, could do more to to really enforce these these mechanics, you know, force them for, force them to stick. And um, as for the um, the, uh, the stances again, right? Like the yeah, as I said earlier, the game tells you about uh, how different attacks come from each stance, but it doesn't make you practice it like the way it made you practice uh, the stance switching and again it's not immediately obvious what that what the stances are doing even though the game tells you so you have to make it to where you, you can show the player what it, what exactly is happening and even though it tells you about the alternate attacks how the alternate attacks are meant to um, change your stance that beginner deck that they give you almost every attack in that deck is changing your stance, whether you press square or triangle uh, for PS4 or whatever buttons it is for whatever you play on, play the game on. So like, it's still not, it's still not obvious what the alternate attacks are meant for, since at the beginning, every attack, almost every attack that you're doing with that beginning deck is changing your stance, right? So in that regard, that um, that wasn't a very effective way of teaching the player about those things and especially about the alternate attacks all right all right and um, speaking of things that the game doesn't teach you effectively um, yeah, guard breaks breaking attacks really let me let me just start with that breaking attacks the game has you break through these doors right to explain breaking attacks to you and what happens is they, the new player will say will think what well, I'm because what I've how I'm how I'm how I'm processing this is that when I see this when I see how the game teaches uh, breaking attacks I'm thinking okay the new player will think that they're supposed to use these uh, these attacks to break through doors and since though that there's only like three doors in the entire game and they're all in that one beginning area you. All you're doing is setting them up to be confused later because breaking attacks, th that, those are not what um, those breaking attacks are actually supposed to be used for. Allow me to explain. The game doesn't tell you this, but there are two types of breaking attacks. There are guard breaks and regular breaking attacks. The guard breaks are slow, heavy damage moves that glow orange. They have low to medium range and they do a ton of uh, stun on block and on hit and if they're blocked they do about they take away about half to like three quarters depending on the guard break of your stamina of your of your opponent's stamina all right and um, the regular breaking attacks are low damage, but they're quicker uh, than the regular guard breaks. They give you a good amount of stun, not as much. Um, they have medium to long range, and they do a good chunk of stamina damage to your opponent if they're blocked. So, they're basically light uh they're basically light uh guard breaks just yeah 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 they they're basically light guard breaks but the th you see the thing is the thing they both have in common besides being 
pressure tools, right? Is that they also um, they also uh, beat charge attacks, right? What are charge attacks? Well, charge attacks are um, they're these uh, attacks in the game that are heavy sl and slow, but uninterruptible attacks, meaning that you cannot. You can't normally uh, punch somebody out of these moves. You have to use either a guard break or a regular breaking attack to beat it before it hits you. And you'll know um, you'll know an attack is a charge attack because it has armor on it. Because uh, aren't these charge attacks have like a white coat, right? Like somebody will have gain a white coat when they're doing a the charge attack. They'll be coated in white, you know. They don't glow. They, I say they're coated in white because they don't exactly glow white, but they get they get like this white coat that uh, engulfs them, sort of. So yeah, those attacks you're gonna have to watch out for those. You have to either defend against them or you have to use um, a breaking attack uh, on them before it actually hits you to beat the charge attacks. So yeah that's what breaking attacks are actually used for. Why the game introduces you to breaking attacks by uh, busting through doors is beyond me. Like, I, I have no idea. That, that is a huge misstep on the side of the devs. It, 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 just, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, slow clap. You need to make it make sense, okay? Make it make sense, please. Alright, like if you're gonna teach us about breaking attacks or any other attacks with special properties, you have to do it in a way that makes sense. Especially if you aren't gonna give us more doors to bust through. Like, please, for the love of God, slow clap. Stop doing that. Alright? Good. I mean. <sighs> well, anyway, uh, moving on. The last uh, thing that I want to show off before I close this section off is um, the stuff with the crystals. Uh, since I didn't really show that in the last in the um, last part, since I forgot to get I forgot to get uh, footage for that, but I, I was tired. I didn't want to. I didn't feel like going back to um, going ba back to the into the game. To, Get, get a clip of me looking over at the crystal stuff because I, I mean I was tired when I was finally putting the whole thing together but uh, yeah here's the crystal stuff and oh uh, by the way about the rift coins I went over the rift discs but not the rift coins the rift coins are um, a thing as a another resource that you earn by uh, gaining levels in combat trials so every time you gain a level in combat trial I think it gives you a rift coin. So, uh, yeah. And then the rift coin will give you one piece of random gear, and the rift disc will give you three pieces of random gear. But yeah, anyway, the crystals, you know. The crystals, you can spend them on emotes, um, gear, and you can spend them on, uh, intros for your character for when they go into, uh, combat trials. Uh, another thing you could uh, spend the crystals on uh, that, that the game really should tell you about is um, your appearance and your stats. Like, you, you can respect your stats. So, like, you know, um, uh, once you reach level 60, then you can respect your stats. But, um, yeah, the game should tell you that. Like, I can't tell you how many. Um, new players that I've run into that told me that uh, they started a new game because they wanted to uh, change their char how their character looked or they wanted they, they didn't like how they how they um, they um, specked out their stats specked out their character with their stats or or they wanted to play oh, oh crap wow I completely almost for I almost completely forgot about this yeah like so so sometimes I run into people, new players who uh, make a new character because they want to try out a different style, right? The thing is, um, I, I touched on this a bit um, 
in the first part, but I didn't really expand on it, but um, like the school system, that's what the school system is for. You don't need to make a new character to try out a different style. You All you have to do is join somebody's school. So like in addition to gaining the moveset, you also gain uh, their style. If um, if their style is different than yours, you will begin learning every time you use it successfully. So uh, for example, I have a Forsaken school on my main character. And I have a, I've been shown, you've seen my um, you've seen my deck that I use and how I uh, used my deck on my second character to learn those moves and all that, right? But like also if I switch to my school style, right, and I use it uh, successfully uh, to defend, you know, uh, I'll begin like learning it in much the same way when you like. Uh, use you know your, your attacks from a, your school deck so like in this example here you know I uh, since I started with cult on this character and now I'm learning for uh, forsaken every time I uh, parry uh, I gain a bit of experience uh, towards learning uh, for forsaken the forsaken style so that's that's how that works the game should tell you this but uh, it doesn't but also pay no attention to <laughs> I say that but like no but really like don't worry about this uh, this downfall thing here it's this this dungeon area here like that's a that's a downfall thing and well you know what I think I I might as well just talk about it right now since I was gonna do this when I got to page in but you know I was gonna talk about the styles in general but uh, I figured I might as well tell tell you about this now um, so there's this dun uh, downfall dungeon mode that you ha you could get you gain access to after you beat the uh, uh, tutorial slash story, um, and the game will like once you're an absolver, um, the game will actually tell you that you have unlocked this mode, right? So, and that this was this was something that was added later on. So I mean. Yeah, like they they tell you about this, but they don't tell you about all the other stuff that they added. So I mean, that's kind of a that's a pretty big uh, oversight right there, you know. But uh, yeah, uh, I know that doesn't exactly fit in the tutorial, but because this is as far as the crystals and the school stuff and. Yeah, in the in the dungeon stuff, like that's that's more in game type stuff. But like the game, as, uh, excluding the downfall mode, the game doesn't tell you about that stuff. Uh, so like I figured this was like a, I figured this would be like a good part to just talk about it here, since you know the game doesn't uh, really tell you about all the uh, the, the previously mentioned stuff about about it about the crystals and the schools and the, all that so yeah now i think i think i'm officially actually done with its tutorial section of this review now i'll be covering the training mode Okay, so as I hinted at in part one, the training mode is quite lackluster. Don't get me wrong, for what it uh, does do, it does it good. Like it, it does what it it does its job at just you know uh, letting you build your deck and test it, uh, test everything out on the dummy, like uh, like see if your deck flows well or the way that you want it to and all that. Like that's fine. It does that good, all right. But it's missing some very key features, some very crucial features, right? Like being able to practice defending, right? Like it. it there's no way. Like I said in part one, there's no way you can practice your defense uh, in in this practice mode. But I, I look. Look here. Look. I know what you're gonna say, right? Just, just use the NPCs in the open world. 
that's what they're there for. Practice on them. Well, <laughs> look, man, like, that's, no, that's not what the NPCs are there for. They're not supposed to be used for practice. Like, you can use them for practice, but they're not, that's not a very good way to practice defense, okay? All right, maybe for the timing of, um, timing of moves, but, like, it's not very effective, right? Like, you telling me to practice on NPCs, or telling a new player to practice on NPCs is the equivalent of uh, telling someone uh, in Guilty Gear, like, let's assume, let's assume Guilty Gear had the same issues with its training mode that Absolver does, right? And that it didn't have a way to practice defense, right? That's, okay, so like, let's, let's just say that, right? That's the same thing, like, Practicing on it, telling somebody to practice on NPCs and Absolver is the same thing as telling uh, uh, someone to uh, practice their matchup knowledge uh, against the AI in versus mode. Okay. Like, bruh. Okay. You tell me if you're ready to properly defend against uh, Maze, uh, a heavy dolphin, and a uh, regular dolphin, right? Like, if you, can you, you tell me if you can tell the difference between those two attacks, right? Or if you're ready to block this mix-up here I'm showing right now, right? That's overhead, low, overhead, or overhead, low, low. You tell me if you're re if, uh, if practicing against the AI in, in the versus mode is going to prepare you for that, right? <laughs> I mean, because that's just the thing. It doesn't do that. It's not going to do that because the AI. I mean, it's AI. It's not going to do anything as complex as a, as uh, anything a human can do. A human can think of, right? But a training mode with the right features can, because you can take, uh, you could you could take uh, control of the d of the AI dummy, the dummy, right? So, like, what? What uh, Absolver needs for its practice mode is a way to get the dummy to do certain things, like give us uh, let, uh, give us some settings with the dummy that um, that make it attack or something, like make it block, uh, make it use its style ability, like uh, like even in even in Sifu you can practice your defense in that game, like it's it's um. It's practice mode. You can set the uh, the dummy to aggressive, and in some and like and in some capacity, you can practice your defense. It's not great. That training mode is lackluster too. But at least you can, in some capacity, uh, practice uh, your your defense. Practice parrying. Practice avoiding. You know. You don't get that in Absolver. Absolver desperately needs. Uh, this feature that allows you to um, set the dummy to do certain things, right? And especially, like, especially given like that, there's nothing really separating the new blood from the veterans of this game, right? Since there's like, other than timing, there's nothing separating the new bloods. And the veterans from like matching with each other other than timing in this game right like they could I, w I hate to say this but rank mode would actually be a detriment to this game since the player base is so small it would actually create like a virtual fighter situation in which that um, if you try to play ranked or whatever right it's gonna take you a long ass time to get a match like it, in, you know for some people who play this game it already takes a long time to get a match in this game Rank, a ranked mode would just make that uh, wait time even longer, alright? And even when you do get ranked mode in Virtual Fighter, it's not uncommon to run into uh, someone who's um, like 5 to 10 levels above you, so it's... Like, it's... It's it's, <laughs> it's a really shitty situation. You're, you're still SOL, you know? Um, but yeah, like... I think... As far as like learning, uh, practicing your defense goes in practice mode, like I, I understand that the, um, there's a concern with um, with the with uh, it, it conflicts with the move learning mechanic because 
you're supposed to learn moves in the open world and but like surely there's got to be some way you can turn off move learning and meditation right so you can practice against uh, moves and stuff and also given how um, given how um, you can make your um, you can make your own like your own move set and all that like Absolver also needs a way to and for its practice mode right its training mode I mean, you, need, you need a way to get the dummy to do certain attacks right so you there needs to be a way to uh, create the dummies the uh, the AI dummies move set so you can practice against certain strings as well you know because like people are you know like people are there's they have so there's so many unique decks that you can make with this game right so you you that's a feature that is absolutely crucial to Absolver's training mode right yeah so let us customize like give the dummy like a empty deck for us to customize so we can practice you know certain strings and you know like a like you know you can have the dummy do it like automatically or you could like uh, create a playback feature like the way um, Guilty Gear does like Guilty Gear has a playback feature so you can uh, practice against certain setups or uh, uh, like different mix-ups and whatnot uh, like take the dolphin again like uh, May has two different versions of that dolphin attack and I can actually practice for it by like recording uh, her doing the attack right and then like and in a in a records in a record slot right and then I can record her doing a di the, the uh, heavy version uh, of that attack in a different um, record slot and then I can just have the uh, uh, have it like play randomly um, um, when I whenever I like uh, set the dummy to play um, to playback mode so I could practice uh, the difference between uh, I can practice uh, defending and see, and I can see the difference between each uh, uh, each version of that attack and and how know how to defend against it and know when it's my turn to attack and when it isn't so I, I don't get counter hit right and uh, Virtua Fighter has uh, a similar feature as well although it's not as good but at least it's there right at least it's there without features like these like Absorber's training mode is just extremely bare bones and you know it, it will in a fighting game you shouldn't always just be forced to throw yourself throw yourself out in the wild and just hope you can get something out of it you know hope you can improve hope you can get good you know there should be like an environment that you can enter right or like that you have you can have access to where you can just safely practice without having to worry about you know your health and dying and respawning and having to just try all over again all right and that you can just easily repeat things that you have trouble with easily practice easily like you know repeat practice against things you're having trouble with right like sure you can you can like you can get somebody to teach you and you can practice against them but like this game is really over reliant on player re uh, interaction and stuff like man like even though it I don't even know if that's intentional like I don't think it is but like that just kind of is how it is you know Thanks to how bare bones the training mode is, you know, like you have to ha have somebody teach you all this, like teach you all this stuff, or practice with you. Like, man, like if I want to practice something or, or like test something, right? Like I don't want to have to reach out to somebody every time I want to do that. All right, I want to be able to do that kind of stuff on my own. Okay, so and like. I like yeah look I I I know that uh, people say practice is good but experience is better but uh, you want to know 
You want to know what's better than experience? Being able to practice what you experience. That's all I gotta say about that. Anyway, um, I think that's gonna be about it for this part. Uh, I think I covered everything I wanted to say in this section. Or at least I hope I did. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be it. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep the video length down. You know, I'm gonna try to keep it low, or at least lower than the first part, because, you know, ooh, that was a lot to um, get through and unpack. Probably should have broke that up, but, you know, it, it's just whatever. But, yeah, I'm gonna try to keep the video length down for um, this part and uh, later parts. So, uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part three. And uh, until next time, have a good one, y'all.